Love podcasts, hate nonsense. It's the Politics Joke Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lift the stamp and send it. Drop the hammer. <laughs> Drop the hammer. Ed Campbell's back. He's back, ladies and gentlemen, the golden boy of politics, Joe. How are you, my friend? Doing very well. Lovely to be back. Lovely to be home. Missed you. Missed, Missed you guys. You. Missed you while you were away. This is the only time we see each other. I know. Mm. I know. And of course, uh, Ava Santina, politics show's political correspondent as well. How are you? Well, can we just start by saying that neither of you are whooping anymore? Yeah. And there's a very specific reason for that. By edict. Yeah, because neither of their girlfriends fancied them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and that is not even a joke. Well, uh, she married me at the weekend. Oh, yes. So oh, yeah. Who's Sorry, laughing? Yes. Who's laughing now? Have some fucking respect. And it... you still didn't whoop? No, still. So I, I, now, I'm now, I can whoop with impunity because you yeah. can't get rid of me. No, 90 days, I think, is the window for annulment. So. <laughs> after three months that's that's like on the, on the thing it? no i just I, I looked it up <laughs> that's like that's like the note <laughs> and if i think in honor of all these nuptials you should give a whoop you should whoop no whoop for my marriage i've uh -huh. got some self-respect <laughs> i'm really happy about you know congratulations and everything we bought you a plant didn't we you did buy me a plant that's very kind of you guys thank you very much i mean it's just been a great weekend to be honest with you there's mm -hmm. there's there's that there's the resignation of boris johnson there's the fact it's hotter than Ibiza in central London right now, and we're drinking an ice cold Moretti, <laughs> and, it's, it's ice cold. and it's not midday yet. That's what Ollie's wife wanted yep. to, for her wedding day to be on par with Boris Johnson's resignation. <laughs> yeah, I, I also uh, celebrated ce celebrated it. The honeymoon was sitting just over there in the other part of the studio. You won't be able to see this, dear viewer, but it's just over there. It's the unfiltered set, and I interviewed Gary Lineker, and he said, this is a pretty poor honeymoon, isn't, isn't it? <laughs> you shouldn't have brought your wife then to watch. I know, I know, but you know, we're always looking for a third. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> Drop a comment if you want to be the third. <laughs> DMs are open. Do not do that. Um, should we stop talking about my, my personal life and start talking about politics? Is that too much to ask? No. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Um, Boris Johnson's gone. Just, 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 I mean, I feel like he obviously occupies so much space in the media. We all kind of probably know at this stage how it happened. But Ava, as the voice on the ground, pacing the corridors of power in Westminster... Can you tell us what happened? Can you tell us how we're in this situation? Why is Boris Johnson gone? The TLDR, is that what we say? Yep. Is that um, yeah. there was a meeting last week. Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak had a meeting about who would be on the honours list. They both left with two completely different interpretations of what happened in that meeting. Sunak was pretty sure he said, you're not having Nadine Dorries <laughs> being put into the House of Lords. And Johnson left going, she's on the list. <laughs> and then a, a huge... A row, erupt, a row erupted and there's like a really interesting little tidbit in it which is basically going back to the HOLAC, the House of Lords Appointments Commission. So those are the people who told Rishi Sunak that Nadine Dorries was not making it into the House of Lords and the Prime Minister can override that but they don't traditionally, it's a really big move. The only Prime Minister to have ever overridden it in history is Boris Johnson himself, <laughs> and that was to get Evgeny Lebedev into the House of Lords. I quite like, I quite like the image of in Boris Johnson's head. He's like, well, you just override it. You just, it's just what you do. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't really see what the problem is, Rishi. It's you so just... spoilt, isn't it? It's like exactly what you'd expect from his personality. Like, I will have my way, no matter what. I guess um, it, Boris Johnson's quit because he lied, right? That's essentially what happened. He gets the report back from the committee and... He, it finds him to have misled Parliament and he quits. And the thing about this with Boris Johnson is that it's not surprising. It is his MO. The man is as allergic to the truth as I am to pollen. I have taken that. <laughs> um, <laughs> he, I was a zinger. Was a zing! <laughs> he, um, you know, he was, he's been sacked twice for lying, once by the Times for fabricating quotes. I think that was in... 2000, in 2004 maybe. No, in the 80s. That was in the 80s. And then he was sacked by the leader of the Conservative Party for lying about having an affair. So that's lying about a lie, because presumably he would have promised his wife at the time to love and cherish her. He, Maybe a lesson there. Yeah, possibly, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> he, he blamed the Liverpool fans for Hillsborough. On the front of the 2019 Conservative Party manifesto, he said his party would not increase national insurance. They have done. Um, he told his ethics advisor that he didn't know who paid for the redecoration of the Downing Street flat. Then the WhatsApp messages came out of him messaging Lord Brownlow, asking for more money to renovate the Downing Street flat. He lies. He relentlessly lies over and over and over again. And when he gets caught, he, he runs away. Mm. Yeah. 
scared of the electorate, won't face a by-election. Farewell, Boris Johnson. And if you needed any more evidence that Boris Johnson lives in our heads rent free, <laughs> Ollie did that without any notes. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of looking at kind of looking into into your two's eyes. I just think when someone shows you who they are, believe them. And mm -hmm. he's been showing us for a really long fucking time. I didn't even mention Brexit. No, I did. <laughs> you know that was a, a, quite a long list. I mean, fuck me, he's gone. But should we talk about the consequences a little bit more because it's going to lead to by elections? And there's also this question. I think the front page of the Mail on Sunday was Tory war. Um, there may or may not be some kind of civil war going on in the Tory party around this. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily the case. I guess perhaps you'd say the Mail on Sunday is slightly a, a Boris siding paper. And I think him, Nigel Adams and Nadine Dorries quitting is less of... Boris is a big beast, but at the end of the day, it's th three MPs that are kind of past it now mm. over the hill. And no, but it's important because it's totally unprecedented that you would have this many by-elections without death or sickness. Like You've got to remember the only reason that they're going up to another by-election is because they're arguing at the top. Mm. It's like two little children squabbling about who gets the honours, who gets the merit badge. Mm. And so the whole <laughs> country gets turned you know, upside down. Mental. That's what... It's, it's the presumption of, which I object to, of, oh, I, I should be a member of the House of Lords. Uh, you know, Nadine Doris has said that Sunak and James Forsyth have blocked a working class girl from Liverpool. She yeah, fuck off. She's from Crosby. I think I, I don't want to get into the dynamics of Merseyside about. Because you don't know it. Do you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I, think, I, I think she did. She has come from a working class background. She called but, um, Forsyth and Sunak posh boys. Didn't yeah, she? but as in Boris two, Johnson, famously not a posh boy. No, he's the, he's the most normal man in the world. <laughs> and then, um, but two posh boys have stopped a working class person from Liverpool achieving the House of Lords. Do you know who else isn't in the House of Lords? Like millions of people. <laughs> 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 it's not. I don't. I don't think any of us will ever be in the House of Lords. I'm, don't I'm at peace with that. Ed. Just believe. You've got to believe in Ed Campbell. Well, maybe. Yeah. No, I will. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> you guys won't be. But I, th I think it's, it's the presumption of being like, oh, you were promised this honour of, regardless of what you think of the existence of the House of Lords, whether it should be abolished or not, it is supposed to be this big grand honour, and it's supposed to be a really integral part of the legislative system of this country, and it shouldn't just be used as like a bobble to reward upper ministers lackeys and i think it, sh it cheapens it entirely not that that's not new it's been cheapened before like michelle moan being appointed was the stupidest thing in the world but i think why uh, why <laughs> <laughs> put some respect on baroness moan's baroness name of, ugh. <laughs> where is she where's she the baroness of do we know it's something like it's it's insane it's like mayfair it's, Sick. it's so where would you want tacky. to be where would you want to be lord of where would you want to lord, be lord of Baronet um, of a decent part of the country. Mayfair's quite punchy. Aberdeen. East Renfrewshire. That's where I'm from, technically. Okay. It feels like it's probably taken. I don't know. It's, quite, it's a council. I, I don't know. Which I like the oh, do you, Does it need to be... No, I think, I think they should make it up, mate. All right, okay. I think they just give you a bit of it. There Excellent. you go, have that. <laughs> That's mine now. Have Renfrewshire. Have this castle. How yeah. feudal does it get? Like, can you start, like, what? I don't think you get to put up a castle and start char charging land. You get, to, you get to get to take a rival lord's <laughs> land. <laughs> Only if you beat him in ritual combat, yeah. mano a mano. Do you know what is quite feudal? We drove past, what is that Tory MP that you went down to Drax. look at? Richard Drax. Drax. Richard Drax. We drove past it on the weekend, on the way down to Devon. It's huge, his estate that he's got down there. And it is actually a feudal estate. Did you know he rents back the farms mm. to the... Was that what your whole piece was about? No, the whole piece all was right, about... All right, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> did you know? Did you know all these facts about Richard Drax? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> you can watch my 15-minute film about yes. it. Uh, um, you drove past the Wall of Dorset, presumably. Great Wall of Dorset. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Surrounds his estate. Extraordinarily large, isn't it? It's huge. It's absolutely massive. And yeah. if you want to know more... Watch my video about it on the Politics Joe channel and don't listen to <laughs> tidbits from Ava. There's, um, <laughs> I just go on here today. I mean, that does actually. Don't talk about my tidbits. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Um, I mean, we didn't, in that piece, we didn't really get into the question of land ownership, but it's also, it's a completely valid one, right? You know, there's, it's something like, I'm bastardizing the statistics now, but it's about between 25% and 50% of England. We don't actually know because it's incredibly secretive about who owns, who owns large parts of the country. But somewhere between 25 and 50% of it is owned by less than 1% of the population. And the vast majority of those people can trace the lineage of their family owning that land back to the Norman Conquest. Mm, there's uh, it's in Arundel. There's some, there's, it's inscribed on the castle at Arundel that's like, since William Rose and Harold fell, a duke has sat at Arundel. And it's like, so literally medieval conquest. 
That's there, was, there was a really good quote by the old Duke of Westminster. He was giving a talk to a school about, and it's like a QA thing, and he's like the richest man in Britain. And someone asked him, what advice would you give to like young aspirational entrepreneurs about how to get, how to become successful and rich, maybe as rich as you are one day? And he said, have an ancestor that was best friends with William the Conqueror. Which, bang on. Sums it up. Bang on. Yeah, there's a good book up, up on this called uh, Who Owns England by Guy Shrubsall, which I would uh, recommend reading. I was randomly reading about American, um, what they called Ivy League universities this yeah. morning. And it's like 25 to 40% of their intake is hereditary. Like, so someone oh, like legacy, 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 that, legacy yeah. that's it. It's extraordinary, isn't mm. it? It's because there's, there's this guy complaining about how he didn't get in and he had a perfect GPA and like, well, you know, SATs, whatever they've got to get. Everyone was just like, it's because you're such a dork. <laughs> you, should have, you should have got outside and done some activities. <laughs> then they would have taken you for your extracurriculars. <laughs> but you sat inside and did nothing. <laughs> Uh, what's a legacy admission? Does it mean if your parents went, you can get in? Yeah, it's like your your admission mm. is marked as um, your parents went to Princeton or Yale or Harvard, and then you're I think you're more likely to get in. I don't know what the actual statistics are. I think it's something they're actually really trying to push back on mm. because, say, two hundred years ago, there weren't that many people. Well, maybe the college didn't even exist, but there were far fewer uh, alumni students. But it's like an exponential number of people are now legacies. And Trickle so down unfair. legacy. Yeah, so it's it's really unfair about people who did not come from people often money. Say, or, people often say that America doesn't have a class system, but it sounds like a really bold and brave attempt to entrench a class system <laughs> in, in their country. So you've got to hand it to them. You've got to hand it to them. Um, should we carry on talking about land? Should we go back to Boris Johnson? I guess the only thing I'd say is that the church and the, the crown also owns huge parts of the country. But other than that, well, should we just move on? Yeah. Back to Boris then. Um, let's talk about the consequences of this because... We, as demonstrated, we could talk about Boris Johnson all day. The, the key thing here is three by-elections, which are eminently contestable. I'm surprised, actually, Ed, that you haven't already hot-tipped it to one of them by now since it was announced. You are, of course, you love to report on a by-election for politics, Joe. It's quite a passive-aggressive nudge yeah. there, wasn't <laughs> it? <laughs> what are you doing, bro? Yeah. Why are you here in the studio? <laughs> yeah. Go and do some work. <laughs> Sorry that my job is this today. <laughs> Sorry that that doesn't, that doesn't work for you. Um, of the recent by-elections on which you've reported, hot favourites, what what, 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 which one stand out to you? Where was um, Indoor Gamer? That was... That was, was that Tiverton and Honiton? We went. Ava and I Shropshire. went. Shropshire. Shropshire, excuse Shropshire. me. Shropshire, and it was that candidate from the Lib Dems who I still don't... I won't say her name because I'm sure she's all right, but she was... What a horrible woman she was that day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Bloody Leave hell. this in. She was awful. <laughs> Leave this in. <laughs> <laughs> I went to do the interview. Don't this, cut this. <laughs> <laughs> don't you dare. <laughs> I went to do this interview in... Um, this manor house that the Lib Dems had rented out. And um, I, the mail had just been in and I guess she was in a particularly bad mood. And then I sat down and I was like, hi, how are you? And she's like, could you just start? <laughs> and I was like, right, we're off, we're off. <laughs> do, do you remember when we stumbled across an interview with Annalise Dodds? We, oh yeah. We got off the train. Gate crashed it. Gate crashed it. We got off the train and so to get to, what was the town? Oh, we're, we're at the town we had to go to, there isn't a train station. So you had to get- Dewsbury? Maybe. Somewhere. Mm. <laughs> somewhere in so, England. Somewhere I in don't England. care to remember. <laughs> this England is the town. non-London-centric <laughs> politics that people come for. It's Eng too Scottish-centric. Yeah, we were, in, we were in, in England town, and we had to, in order to get to England town, you had to go to Englandville, which does have a train station. <laughs> and so we got off the train at Englandville, and this guy you know, this guy came up to us and was like, oh, are, you, are you guys journalists? Because I was carrying a, a camera. And we were like, oh, yeah. And he's like, do you want an interview with Annalise Dodd? The hottest ticket in town! <laughs> but she was Shadow Chancellor. It's a sellout, yeah. So, she, so yeah. it was a hot ticket. And we were like, yeah. This guy was a Labour Party volunteer who had arranged to pick up another journalist who had like <laughs> gone for months to set up this interview with Annalise Dodds. <laughs> and so we got in the car and <laughs> the other journalist was fucking fuming. It was <laughs> so I funny. I how angry she like, was. Oh, it was like, <laughs> she did not look at us. We were like, hello. <laughs> da -da -da, cha -cha -cha. <laughs> she was seething. This, this volunteer. I'd probably like, it was probably going to be an exclusive. Yeah. But this Labour volunteer just completely bungled for her. And then, Gave so, us a lift into town. Yeah, we, we, we met, her at, met her at this cafe. And then she had, uh, um, the other journalist did her interview. 
and we just stepped outside with the camera and published <laughs> our interview before, before this woman had even left. But what was funny was that we ended up accidentally following her like all oh, around like, Shropshire. Yeah, yeah. It was like totally <laughs> accidental. So like she'd be like with the next next person, and we'd be like, hey, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Um, and you met the indoor gamer as well, which is, uh, if you could just explain who that is for, for those who aren't fully immersed in the Paul Joe meme culture. Yeah, indoor gamer was maybe, I think he's the most iconic person I've ever vox popped. He was just this guy, probably in his late teens, early 20s. <laughs> he was eating a slice of pizza and I was like, do you fancy a chat? Like, yeah, yeah, sure. And so um, we, I said, because <laughs> the vox pop was about, it was just when kind of party gate stuff had just come out. So it was like, did you have a Christmas party? during lockdown and, it's, and he said I don't get out much a bit more of an indoor gamer me <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't and, put the pizza down no he's holding no, it like he's he holding it bite it the whole like time a, he could have taken a bite at any time he just didn't he was just laxing majestic waxing lyrical about being an indoor gamer and then Tiverton and Honiton I feel like that was the one that never was because you were trying to go and hand out porn to people possibly on a tractor a good video yeah, because the MP whose name yep. I can't remember, Neil. Neil, uh, Neil no, Neil. Paul Neil. Oh, what's Paul Neil Neil's loves name? Porn. Neil who Neil loves porn. Neil Englandville. Neil Englandville loves watching porn in the House of Commons. Um, he triggered that one, and so what he do we says. Even so- search Neil Porn Tory. What's Tiv- this going to pull out? <laughs> Tiverton and Honiton, I think it will do it. It got it, Neil Parrish. Parrish, <laughs> my guy, my horny guy, Neil Parrish. Um, I wanted to do a video handing out Tory por- Tory porn. Yes, but it was going to be like. It wasn't going to be actual pornography. It was going to be like, and would it come on question time or mm. something like that? <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Um, so the dying three... children, starving children. Wow. So the three, um, <laughs> <laughs> so the three uh, by elections we've got coming up: Uxbridge and South Royslip. That's Boris Johnson's constituency. His majority is just over seven thousand votes. You've got Mid Bedfordshire. That's Dorries. She's seeing pretty. Hang on, on, let's go a bit slower. I think. Yeah, I'm just giving the I'm just giving the top line, and then we'll we'll get in we'll get into it. Okay. I'm just the summary. The sum. This well, is the well, summation. Well, you, you can carry on. Though. Sorry, sorry, Ava. Um, <laughs> Twenty four thousand majority. I think for Dorries, that you would assume is probably going to be the least contestable of all of them, but that never say never these days. And then Selby and Ainsty, which is Nigel Adams again, twenty thousand, and I think that's probably going to be the key bellwether. Let's talk about Boris and Uxbridge mm. first. Um, I spent I've spent quite a lot of time there, uh, as I assume probably most of us have really, um, being it the prime minister's constituency. Mm-hmm. I remember in the 2019 uh, election campaign, the candidate was a guy called Ali Milani, and it was very much the decision from Labour was you know um, young working class Muslim guy put him up against the entitled privileged Boris Johnson, and they were really punchy about thinking they could unseat him um, in that election. The, 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 I remember Ali saying to me that the, the thing, it wasn't. And if it was a when, basically the, the tides of demo, demographic change that were not just happening in Uxbridge, happening all around London, but essentially that a, yo- a younger, more ethnically diverse electorate was starting to develop in these places. And obviously that's the Labour Party selection of him. They were really trying to highlight Boris Johnson's previous remarks about, let's say, Muslims, about, let's say, black people. Um, and in the end, I think they probably slightly underestimated Boris Johnson's personal popularity without having the bounce, um, you know, Maybe I would vote for a Tory. I don't know. If the Prime Minister was my MP, you'd probably be inclined to vote for them because it's like, yeah, my my MP is the mm. fucking PM. So, you know, that's like a little bit of prestige for me there. Um, without Boris, I, w- I think that it's almost as good as, as good as a done deal that we're probably seeing that spin to Labour. I don't know if you guys see it differently or have anything you'd like to add on that. Yeah, quite possibly. I mean, it's it's it, it's... The, certainly the candidate they've put in there is very different from Ali. Ali was also a socialist. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, Danny Beals is not. Danny Be- Beals is homegrown, and he is a Stormite. So, and he's already a councillor as well. Okay. Um, Boris Johnson though was eyeing up Hendon a couple of weeks ago. Do you remember that? He was off down there. Oh, he was at the Fet. Yes. Sorry. The Fet. 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 We don't have them in Scotland. They don't know really I think <laughs> Fet is probably in 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 the truest French pronunciation with the convex accent over the e. I mm. think it would be Fet. As a French scholar. <laughs> I, I <think> so. <laughs> You do have French in your degree, no? It, I, it was my degree for one year of university. And, and then, then bailed, I re- bailed hard. Then I realised I was not particularly interested in France and its history or culture. Wow. So I, so I dropped it. Really? You're a philistine. Why did you get turned away by a French woman? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the whole most, thing was the a most, bit. The most Paul. incel reaction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just going to nuke your own career yeah, yeah. Uh, out, out of bitterness. <laughs> um, what were you saying, sorry, Ava? Tell me more about Danny Bills. 
no, I think I'm done with Danny. Okay. But cool. um, what's in- <laughs> <laughs> what's interesting is that there were there were a couple of briefs out last night that Labour reckon they can win all three seats. Now, I would argue that's not possible because, firstly, the Labour Party is bankrupt. It's still paying out a lot of money for some anti-Semitism cases over the last couple of years and a lot of money and damages for people whose text messages were leaked and bullied and, you know, all sorts. So you might see um, Keir Starmer scurrying around various business leaders, maybe BAE Systems might give them a nice <laughs> donation. Look, I, I don't know. I, I, I hear, I'm just Lockheed. hypothesizing. I hear Lockheed Martin are looking pretty swell with cash yeah. right now. Well, it is Pride Month. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, a record sales for the British arms industry, though, I believe. 8.7 billion in sales this year. So Yeah. Well, all you've got to do, year. really, is get inside Shell as well. And that could really grease you up, oil you up. Shut it's up. Just innuendo. Lube Left, up. right and centre. Um, so I doubt, I don't, I, I think it'd be very difficult for them to campaign in all three constituencies. Yeah. So it looks more likely that Selby would be a kind of unofficial quiet pack with the Lib Dems. That's where they would take. Because also the attitudes in Selby... Very t- Mid Bedfordshire, you can see them voting for Starmer. Selby, not quite. I kind of, di- I kind of disagree. To be honest with you, I think, I think you're right. I think Bedfordshire is that sort of true blue rural home counties esque. It's not. I think is Bedfordshire one of the home counties? I don't think it is. No, it's just outside. It's just outside. There. It's, it's in much, that. It's, yeah. yeah, it's just outside of it's, that. It's in the huddle. The yeah, blob. The blob. <laughs> <laughs> that screams to me, Lib Dem. That, that's what that says to me. That's it's, It feels like a, a Honiton and Tiverton. I, I get that kind of energy from it, um, where the Lib Dems can, you know, overturn a, a ginormous majority. I'm, I see Selby as more of the bellwether for the Labour Tory contest. To be honest with you, that that sort of more, more northerly Labour are in second place there. And again, it's a it's a punchy majority that they're going to have to overturn anyway. But I think if the Labour Party wants to be able to say that it's an election winning machine, that it's going to move into power, winning Selby for me is is basically the key, the key thing they have to do there. I would agree with that because Dorries as well is like the ultimate protest vote that you'd turn out for, wouldn't you? You'd go, mm. we're, we're coming in to oust the mm. Tory, you know, heritage. We're getting rid of Nadine Dorries. Mm. Um, well, as a poison chalice to inherit, if you're the candidate standing to replace Nadine Dorries as a, as a Tory, you have to do a lot of work to be like, I'm not like Nadine Dorries. Well, I mean, I don't necessarily know if that's a bad electoral strategy if a fucking majority was 24,000 votes. Yeah, maybe. M- being the Nadine Dorries continuity oh, candidate yeah, sorry, might, yeah. might actually not be a bad shout. I'm Nadine Dorries Mark II. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what type of, what Tory would you bring into that constituency? Who would do well? Well, I guess that, that provokes an immediate question for me, which is like, what is a Sunak Tory? You know, if, if we're sort Ooh. of... Mm. If you're if you're thinking okay, you, like you you were just saying you, the way you were talking about these by elections, you were talking about they feel like they might go for a Starmer type person. I can't remember which one you were you were talking about. It might have been Bedfordshire. Yeah, Bedfordshire. Yeah, if I don't know what the corollary of that is to say a Sunak type Tory, I don't know I don't know what that is. Sort of authoritarian, um, pro inflation, pro talking about migrants and demonising them, but not actually doing anything to improve this their lives. Charles Walker. <laughs> he's I'm not getting, retiring. He's talking to me through the yeah. ether. <laughs> he's back. <laughs> I think. I think that's that is really interesting, though. I think that's that's the conservative membership at large love Boris in a way that they don't Rishi. Mm. I think there's a lot of John, there's a lot of Johnsonians in spirit. Almost they loved that they loved the the majority that Boris won, and I don't think there just isn't that general affection. Or Rishi within the membership. Yeah, it's crazy that you, I think if you were to talk to an actual sensible, screwed on <laughs> Tory, I think they'd really struggle to make the case to say anything other than that post Boris Johnson, post Liz Trust, they now kind of have an adult back in the room, mm. someone who's a fairly serious operator. Disagree with the politics of them all you like, but I think you'd struggle to say that Rishi Sunak isn't, you know, um, doesn't take what he's doing seriously, thinks his heart is in the right place for him. You know, he, he, what he believes are the country's priorities, he's pursuing them and, and trying to be competent about it. And I've completely lost my trail of thought. What were you saying? Uh, that the membership don't love. Yes, and, and regardless of that, there is still this huge strain of thought within the Tory membership that Rishi Sunak betrayed Boris Johnson, that Boris Johnson is the messiah, and and that the, the Rishi let, let, let them all down, basically, by deposing him. And... You know, if you it, it, lay the politics to the side, I think it's just objectively mental to suggest that Rishi Sunak isn't going, isn't like a more competent or serious prime minister than Boris Johnson or indeed Liz Truss. Doesn't have the gift of the gab, I suppose, though. 
No, I, I think you'd really struggle to say that about Rishi Sunak, to be quite honest with you. What I think is quite interesting is the Conservative Party's affection for Boris Johnson, given, I think, I think he holds them in quite a lot of contempt. What, the I, members? Yeah, I think, I think he would have attached himself to any vehicle that led him to power. Mm. I think there is, a, there is a universe in which Boris Johnson was a Labour Prime Minister. He could have, if because he's, it's not to do with his, his politics doesn't inspire loyalty or generation. It's his like, it's his personality. And I think he would have changed his entire politics if the Labour vehicle was how he sent, That's interesting. How he sent it to power. Gordon Brown, I reckon, would have killed him. <laughs> <I don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? How? What do you think you, the method of death would have been? Can you imagine? Um, so, like... Taken him out the back and just strangled him. He'd probably, I reckon, he'd brained him with a telephone. That, you know when Boris Johnson said that he earned chicken feed at the Telegraph. Yeah, yeah. I reckon he would stuff that that money down Boris Johnson's throat. <laughs> and that's what I think would happen. Kill him with it. And then like a be big bellow, he'd use him like this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah to do quantitative easing on the market <laughs> with the money back out. That's what he'd do. <laughs> Um, that's interesting though that you talk about that because um, Nigel Farage is on manoeuvres suggesting that he and Boris might enter into an, into an alliance and either start a party or probably I assume just join reform um, to, to launch uh, to Boris launch, Johnson uh, in reform no I mean uh, per, I'm be, to be clear, this is what Nigel Farage is saying. It's not what I'm saying. <laughs> it's I, about the Alba party. <laughs> <laughs> They've got vacancies. I, think... I did it for Europe. I'll do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, Boris Johnson is now the head of the Scottish Independence <laughs> campaign. Yeah, the first thing is like the tour of like the SNP cellar where they've put all those contracts, I guess. <laughs> you know, they've just all been done for. I just don't see Boris Johnson doing anything other that that tarnishes his brand. He knows that joining reform or whatever he's not going to win an election yeah and he's just not prepared the entire thing with him his entire image within the tory party and and within britain is of a winner right winning the mayor mayoralty of london which is a labor city allegedly uh winning the brexit referendum winning the 2019 election manifesto and if he goes and joins let's say it is reform He's not going to. He's he's almost certainly not going to win a seat, let alone win an election, and it just destroys. It. I mean, it's, it's it's dead before it even gets off the ground. Yeah, that's why he's so upset at the moment, isn't yeah. it? Because with with him, it's never been about um, the gravitas of the pin, of, of the position. It's always been about making people like him. He's yeah. got something very strange about him. He always has to win over the room, win over the constituency, win over the country. That's his progression. The and. Do you know what actually really pissed me off, right? Did you see that next week, you know how it's going to go to a vote in the, the Commons about Boris Johnson, about, you know, everything, mm. the Privileges Committee? Yeah. In that vote, Labour were allegedly, or well, were thinking about putting a motion on, amendment, sorry. Motion, fuck. <laughs> Labour, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Labour were thinking about adding a motion that would be to ban Boris Johnson from the parliamentary estate altogether so he could never stand to be an MP ever again. Now, why are Labour getting involved in all of this? Yeah. Like, seriously, like, Labour haven't, all Labour have done is reneged on their energy policy. <laughs> they haven't put down anything else. Is that old Rachel Reeves bit off in Washington rowing back on that 28 billion for the green economy? Yeah. Yeah, punchy. I think that I think there's there's something going on in, in the shadow cabinet between uh Keir Starmer and Ed Miliband. I don't know what it is, but it would appear he's kind of he's been slapped down there. He's so stupid to do that. Yeah. Ed Miliband is like a is a force. And people reckon he's a recognized Ed effect. Miliband is a force of nature. Yeah. He <laughs> is like a hurricane, a tsunami, <laughs> a political I, earthquake. Former Prime Minister. Which is why Ed he was defeated <laughs> in 2015 you know, by David Cameron. Yeah, but he worked for Gordon Brown, guys. He worked for Gordon Brown. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's, that, that is going on there. I mean, I think that's probably a, a topic for a, a conversation of the other day. I think there's more there. Polite way of Ollie saying, shut the fuck up. No, that not was at all. really boring. No, it's not boring at Listeners, all. If you want to <laughs> head to my Twitter what account. I had to say, uh, email Ollie <laughs> <laughs> at joe.co.uk. <laughs> and um, his number is. <laughs> yeah. I just I wanted to share a quick word as well. Um, whilst this, you know, it, the insanity of this Tor Tory party open warfare where 
a former prime minister has essentially triggered three by-elections, which will be deeply damaging for the Conservative government. Meanwhile, over on Matt Hancock's TikTok account, um, <laughs> he, is, he, he is ranking his five favourite drinks, and um, there's some good sound bites, which I think we maybe will drop in right what about was now. number one? Because I saw Guinness was two. Yeah, it had to be Four WK. It was he WKD. Got, he put that as number one. He didn't want to put it as number one. He, he wanted Guinness to be number one, and, and it was like his, the quote from him was like, I do love Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta rank five drinks in order of preference without knowing what comes next. First, oh, Guinness. I love Guinness. But can I go straight in at number one without a knowing what else is coming next? I'll give it number two because I'm an optimist and I hope there's something even better coming up. Oh no! WKD. That is definitely five and it's definitely not one. Can I shift them all up and put WKD right at the bottom? It's it's a good soundbite. It'll be. We'll have it on a soundboard. It's going to appear in the episode. You know who's going to drink WKD? It. Who? Your friend Roche. Oh, she yes. on the podcast. What? That's what she's requested. Really? Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's going to be on the WKD Blue. The Blue Wickets. Yes. Very, That's very good. Yeah. Will you drink a blue WKD whilst Roche is here? Yeah. No, it's keen. <laughs> I right. like blue. I like blue kids. Right. Do you fancy or something? No. <laughs> this is this, this is devolving into school. <laughs> you fancy it? <laughs> <laughs> no, you fancy it. <laughs> Nicked a la sturgeon. Woo! Boom! Boom! Great, great pun from producer Laura. It is actually a fantastic pun. It just doesn't really translate to being spoken out loud. It looks good on the page. Um, the SNP, 100% hit rate of getting their former first ministers arrested. <laughs> you love to see it. <laughs> this guy, every single editorial conversation we have about Scotland, he's like, look, I don't want people to think I'm a Yoon. I don't want people to think I'm a Nat. And I say that line and he can't resist laughing. Yeah. He cannot resist breaking down in laughter. At the Will prospects. that make the edit? Can we not have any discussion about whether I'm a Yoon or a Nat? It's ambiguous. I we don't have to talk about it. I've just no, said, you know, we Nick's. don't know which either either you are. No, what can I say to, to like make sure this isn't in? What will they do to you? <laughs> just lie go back someone. up there and they find I, out. I just, it's just like not even worth it because like indie Twitter is just so fucking toxic. You have like weird. You've already got random people accusing you of being yeah, the son everything. of a genocidal war criminal because yeah. we made one joke about you being Alistair Campbell's son. Yes, which I'm not. <laughs> which, and, and people still we think all, you are. People still think you people are. Still My mum really thinks you are. I'm not correcting her. I, no, my mum's like, you hear what Alistair's kid said the other day? She's like, strange in it how he's that Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> my friend from uni had another friend from uni message her to clarify whether or not I was Alistair Campbell's son recently. It's it's uh I made a rod for my own back by making a funny joke. It was funny. I think it was funny. Well, yeah, he, he didn't it. find it funny. <laughs> he didn't find it funny. <laughs> Your dad didn't find it funny. <sighs> Christmas is going to be awkward this year. Um, but... So having experienced the sort of uh, Tony Blair war criminal side of Twitter, <laughs> not you're not wanting to d d delve into Nats and you. You should come no. over to Dick Pick Twitter. <laughs> That's where I am. <laughs> What, you could be follow so many dick pic accounts. Oh, I get sent so many penises. It's just absurd. And there's no, actually, no, I got sent quite a nice one the other week. Stop and I actually was surprised. Stop it, no, right I now. was surprised because if you, if you can, if you knew how horrendous the dicks are, it's, it's always the same. Look at this microphone muff. It's like that. And then there'll be like a tiny bit of like cocktail sausage out the bottom. <laughs> You're shocked. I open them at six in the morning. <laughs> I don't ask for them. Oh, no. We should probably like put a disclaimer like don't send David dick pigs. No, send them to Ollie. Don't <laughs> <laughs> and his number is. Oh, fucking hell. Should we try and talk about Nicola Sturgeon? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> She's downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> She's in the Nick downstairs. You said about Thatcher. Is she um, dead? Didn't know that. So obviously, look, the, the, Sc the Scottish contempt of court laws um, preclude us from really being able to talk about this case in any kind of detail. But essentially, the story is six hundred thousand pounds of funds raised for a second independence referendum campaign. That referendum campaign has not happened. Where has the six hundred thousand pounds gone? They don't know. They arrested Nicola Sturgeon. She was questioned for seven hours. Um, it's mad, actually. J just thinking about it now, you sort of Boris out of parliament jeremy corbyn kicked out of his party largely sort of um ostracized by the labor party nicola sturgeon arrested um lived in woman deselected oh no she wasn't deselected. Joseph, no. She, she, no, lost, she lost she lost, lost seat. there, there was there was an unbelievable tweet from a lib dem councillor being like and it was essentially like boris johnson don't need to say anything corbyn 
don't need to say anything. Sturgeon, arrested. Someone else, resigned in disgrace. Oh, uh, was Caroline Lucas the Green Leader at she the time? She didn't resign in disgrace. She's an MP, she wasn't. Just because no. he hates her, I don't. <laughs> 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 I love her. Or oh, whoever. But, but then he tweeted like a photo of Joe Swinson standing like that, like, I'm so proud of who I voted for to be Prime Minister. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> it was so You're good. You're joking. Fresh after listening to Super Bass, oh. she stood there, <laughs> let power stones. Campaigning for a statue of Thatcher. <laughs> Do you remember the yellow dresses? That that's one thing that used to grate me. Uh, I'll be honest, Dave, but I don't actually particularly remember uh, what Joe Swinson was wearing during the 2019 election campaign. I was more interested in her ideas. And when I realised she had none, I started thinking about her body con dresses. <laughs> they were never body con. Oh, weren't they? <laughs> oh, weren't they? Oh, weren't they? <laughs> what do I have? Might as well have been for me. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. The one that got away, Joe Swinson. Fuck me. Yeah. What was that? Repeal Brexit. Just nix it. Kill it. Is that what Nicola Sturgeon cheered at when she lost? Or who was it? it yeah, was, it was Swinson, wasn't it? Yeah, she was unseated. She was like, yes! Um, I think this... The SNP's kind of fucked here, no? Well, yeah. Hamza Youssef says that she, he's not going to kick her out of the party because he doesn't believe that she's that, done anything that in conflict. That's interesting because she fu- she fucking loved a little suspension for anyone in the SNP when there was a, a hint of impropriety. I'm thinking, what, the old, what was the name of the old finance? Hint of impropriety? Derek. 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 BT? McKay? Mackay? former finance guy. He Derek Mackay. Yeah, he was... Oh, well, he was, I'm was sorry okay. that you don't take sexual harassment seriously, Ollie. No, <laughs> Or, Mar- Ava, or Margaret Ferrier, who went on the oh, train she, with COVID. Yeah, what she had the whip draw. They were like, we need a by-election now. They, yeah. were, so, they were so quick. <laughs> for like, in fact, like, fair enough. That's, you, that person should not be an MP anymore. Honestly, though, it's tough for him. It's really tough for him, cause especially because he's seen as the continuity candidate. I think, you know, to, he's kind of... He, dra- he drank from the chalice, right? He drank from the sweet Nicola Sturgeon poison chalice. Jesus. He saw he saw the spider and he and he he drank. He sculled it. You know, it's the it's, spider. Yeah, I don't know that phrase. Yeah, Sisyphus. It's Winter's Tale. Leontes. Oh, excuse me. I thought it was Robert the Bruce. I thought we just keep saying. I have drunk and seen. Until the we spider. don't know where we are. Yeah. I don't know much about Winter's Tale. Sh- Shakespeare. Uh, never mind. Who's that? Hamlet. What? Yeah. I, I tried to make it highbrow for like five <laughs> seconds, and it's just fucking. <laughs> Spider. Um, Spider Man. He saw the spider. He sculled it. He drank it. He swallowed it down. He was like, yummy, yummy, yummy. SMP corruption. <laughs> I want to be. I want to be. See, I unless you know anything about Winter's Tale, there's made of it. And I know nothing about Winter's Tale. Um, he, he's, he's in trouble. And I think I've, I've grown so used. This is obviously like a complete. Um, o- simplification and generalization of Scottish politics, but I've grown in the last 10 years to think of the SNP as completely hegemonic in Scotland. And you actually look at the electoral map and some of those seats are marginal. Mm. They are marginal. And one, two, three percent swing towards the Labour Party, you start seeing Labour pick up between five and 10, maybe more seats without that. And, you know, that that, that was 2019. That's before all this stuff started, yeah. started kicking off. Scotland used to be so key to that Labour's electoral coalition and building a majority Gordon Brown and without <laughs> you love Gordon <laughs> Brown today and without um, without without the SNP being being so so um, having such a monopoly on on Scottish constituencies it does pave the way for for the Labour Party to return to, mm-hmm. to the MRP and, polling that we went to the other week showed that um, most people well, well a lot of SNP voters thought that felt the party had taken the eye off the ball and they were only focusing on, um, what, Indie Ref 2 Indian, rather than actually yeah. anything else. I don't think that's true, though. We've talked a lot about welfare and... I think the amount of scandals there is in kind of like real amateur hour scandals in Scottish politics or just like debacles like berries. Like the fucking... The f- I love the ferries. So. The, yeah. the ferry stuff. Like that is, you it's... must love the ferries as a transport nonce. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Evil shark trains. <laughs> 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 sorry, sorry. I don't well, I'm not going to bring up my other ferry thing now. <laughs> <laughs> For those unfamiliar, the SNP painted windows onto a ferry that wasn't ready yet so that they could stand in yeah. front of it, right? And, and actually, Chris it, Grayling bought ferries that weren't 
uh, uh, weren't usable at all. You had to sell them back. Two sell things them are, to the scrapyard. Two things are bad. Two things. Two bad things happened. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's not like a rebuttal. No, it's <laughs> not. Like, it's just the ferries. <laughs> uh, the RMT today. I've called for the Calmac ferries to be uh, taken into public ownership. Today, we make Lynch update for everyone. Por qué? Because of the their disastrous ownership of mm. the ferries. Por Why? Because no. you can't see out the windows. <laughs> 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 That's not. No, it's not just they don't have windows. The berries aren't like saleable. That's, it's not just that they don't have windows. One of them still. They're not. One like, of them's never been launched, right? One of them's yeah, still, so. still in the dock. Only one started running. Have you ever watched them launch a ferry? No, Ava, I have not. <laughs> Sick. Because I have the other things I like to do in my free time. <laughs> Name one. <laughs> Read the Winter's Tale. <laughs> my, my love of Shakespeare <laughs> takes precedence. Uh, um, hopefully, you mean like on YouTube. You don't mean going to watch the actual sa- sailing of a ship. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, you haven't been to a ship launch. Surely not. No. Okay, fine. I went to a cargo ship launch because <laughs> <laughs> I was in the area. <laughs> or intentionally for the cargo ship launch. <laughs> Anyway. I think I'm going to try and steer this conversation back <laughs> into something. With no windows. <laughs> windows are not. Can't steer those ferries, can they? Not windows. in the water, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> windows are not. There doesn't seem to be been much of a difference made to the appetite for Scottish independence, regardless of the fates of the SNP, which I think is interesting. I think what? The SNP... Explain that. Say po- that again. Po- polling for for in, like not for Scottish independence remains in that 40 to 60 window that has done since the last referendum. So I think it's interesting that even though the SNP's dip in fortunes, has it, 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 they're not entwined. I think it, that's interesting. And I think it's maybe perhaps good for the indie movement that there isn't, that if the SNP are no longer, or, or become no longer the... Um, the vanguard of the proletariat for Scottish independence. Uh, you and say you don't want to talk about Nats and Yunes and you're just baiting them. Yeah. You're, ba- you're baiting them so <laughs> None hard. None this is going to make it in. I know. Like... <laughs> Immediately after. Uh, Laura, kill the whole, her, yeah, kill the whole Nicola right. conversation. I just don't want to, just don't want to touch that. I just, just don't want to touch that. My, but, my Twitter mentions but, can't but handle I think, that. I think, I think that's interesting. I think it's probably good for, as in because lots of people don't like the SNP. Even like, like, the, like far left indie supporters don't like the SNP because they're not it's not the indie that they would want they wouldn't want like a centre-left movement they'd want a, like a real radical socialist change so I think it's interesting that yeah. it, it could be, it could regain regain the radical movement and momentum that it kind of had leading up to the 2014 referendum all right <laughs> 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 just not buying it. That, yeah, that fucking sucked, eh? Fair enough. I just know it's not going to go in. It's going to go in. Drop a comment if this goes in. <laughs> um, Ed's put down something that he wants to talk about. Have I? He wants to reform abortion law. <laughs> <laughs> that is outrageous. That wasn't me. <laughs> No. <laughs> do, you to, do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about abortion quickly? Because you've got an interview with Sean Norris that should be. Oh right, not because. Well, you know, you uh, ever an opportunity to plug the brilliant work that you guys do on politics, Joe? Well, so a story this week that a woman who took her legal abortion medication after the time which legally she is allowed to take it, she has been sent to prison for doing so. Um, we've spoken well at length, to be honest with you, in various various occasions about how people in Britain kind of think that the abortion debate is settled, that there's not really, that it's not up for contest. And in reality, uh, I think you, you'd have to argue that it was over. There's something strange about people coming out to shout about the time frame that she's taken in. You know, even these people who start their, their discussion with, I am pro-choice, however, and then they give a reason of, you know, why they don't think this woman should have done what she had had done. And leaving the morality aside, what seems to be a link between all of these people commenting is like, are wanting to punish women there's like this kind of relishing that's going on which is like yeah send her down and it's like the judge put in their statement about how traumatized she was and how aggrieved and upset and she the judge said i can clearly see that you you have remorse and you regret this 
but she was still sent down and the public have gone, yes, lock her up. It's like medieval times again. We're back in charge. You know, this woman is not a danger to the public and she's not going to quote unquote learn a lesson by going to prison. It's a complete waste of taxpayer money to put her in there in the first place. And secondly, it's going to do nothing for her mental, mental health because clearly she's unstable. You, a normal person wouldn't do that, right? It was in the depths of lockdown and it was, you know, she was going through all sorts of mental trauma. She couldn't access any mental health treatment and she couldn't access any um, abortion treatment either before that. She got herself into this situation and now we're punishing her. It just seems insane. Does any of that make sense? No, it does. It goes completely. There's, there's no, what is the public interest of sending this woman to prison? There's no risk of her reoffending for the same crime. No. There's, I think she has two, ki- two kids. Those, three. Three kids. Those kids are, aren't going to have a mother for two to three years, mm. which... That's the other thing about this. That is an insane jail. First of all, oh, I don't think yeah. there, there can be a jail sentence for this, I think, is kind of outrageous anyway. The fact is, it'll be half that, and, you know, we could bet... Yada, yada, yada. Well, no, it's a half woman... that anyway. Go on. So it's half the half. Half has been suspended, hasn't yes. it? Yes. Carry on. Well, I just, I, you can't, I just don't think you can send a woman to prison for doing that. I, no. just, it's, uh, I think it's objectively mental. I think it's completely mental. Um... It's just really, it's just really sad. And it, it, what I, what I don't like about it is how quickly everyone, whenever there's an abortion story in the news, so it's always the same characters just kind of come crawling out of the woodwork. And it's always like silly little woman didn't know what she's doing, and now she deserves to be punished for mm. what she's done. We should never have let them have this in the first place. See the legislation that it's that this was like referring to or was involved in the judgment it's from the mid 19th century which yeah. is astonishing we're, we're, it's a Victorian law yes. that were, that was used to come up with the sentence 1860 or 70 Something wasn't like it that. yeah she was prosecuted under absolutely insane uh, you spoke to Sean Norris about this in this very studio yes she was Sean was in talking to us about far right conspiracies and how they're linked to abortion. It's really, really interesting and I won't do it justice. So you should just watch it and listen to it. Go and watch the interview. Um I think that probably probably wraps us up, guys. I don't know if you you got any other closing remarks you'd like to make. I'd like to give a shout out. Uh, sure, shoot. To friend Paul Joe, a, a guy called Miles, who's a bar t- bartender in a pub in Edinburgh, uh, who gave me lots of free drinks. Wow. I thought it was gonna be about the T shirt. No. Not yet. <laughs> I'm still waiting. Still waiting for the pirate drop. Um, sorry, people say that the, people say that the perks of journalism are the, the best part of the job. So you got three pints for three pints, quite a few, for, uh, for, because of the podcast. Yeah, he, he was a, he was a head. Who was Miles's favourite character? Uh, he, well, you actually, actually would have told Ed. It was he, him. He told, he, oh, I, I didn't, also didn't ask. Was that wasn't like, it was implied? <laughs> I asked. Who do you like best? Yeah, maybe I'll do it next time. Who do you think Miles likes best? Mm. Which one of my personalities <laughs> gave you free points? Yeah, well, you, weren't, you might have given you more. You just weren't there. Yeah, he definitely would have done. <laughs> he definitely, he definitely, he definitely. Ollie would have then got all the free points and then offered to buy everyone else's points, <laughs> like the whole pub. <laughs> We're quite big in Scotland. We're big in the Dom scene in Scotland as well. Yeah, yeah. Megara coming on the podcast. Um, any other bits of house business? If you want to sponsor the podcast, this is a shout out. If you sell beer, give it to us. I mean, it's pretty good. We, we're quite. We, we're quite. Oh, I think that's Beggy to put that in, isn't it? You think it's Beggy? Mm, I don't I, think it's Beggy. Maybe. I like a delicious cold pint of Moretti or Foster's. <laughs> no. <laughs> what I'd like, if you're listening to this, is a draft pump in the studio. Obviously. That would be nice. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have your logo. Can we sit right here? In fact, I'll tell you what. I'd put it in front of Ed Campbell. <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd block I'd Ed a Campbell tattoo out with the on pump. my forehead that, of your logo. <laughs> Maybe we can get Sean to like continuously pull the pints. Put a price <laughs> silently. Put a price on it for me to get tattooed. It's for you to brand, brand your forehead. Like a few hundred thousand pounds. Really? Really? I think that's good value. Yeah, it's huge. <laughs> I think that's, I, that's a lot of real estate. That's a lot of premium real yeah. estate. <laughs> that's a good six inches that you've got. It's a good blank canvas uh, as well, isn't it? Absolutely. What a wonderful forehead you have. Of so course, strong. I've got a huge fucking head. Thanks very much for listening to the Politics <laughs> Go podcast. Catch you on the next one. <laughs> that was stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>